So I was ranting and raving about that. I talked about how in my labor classes, um, the, the Lamaze teacher talked about oranging the perineum. And I was like, the perineum? I mean, that's that little tiny space between your anus and your vaginal opening. And I'm supposed to rub an orange there? Are you kidding me? I didn't understand. I was lost. I called up Nina Hartley, who at that time was still working as a stripper, a porn star, and was in her RN program. She was, getting, she was in nursing school. And she said, oh, they mean fisting. They, they mean um, as preparation for labor, you might want to take a small piece of fruit or hands or fingers and massage this area so that you become accustomed to the idea of stretching. And I was like, no kidding. It, it, it's, it's, it's really fisting. Oranging is fisting. <laughs> and they're doing it in, in the labor classes at UC San Francisco, but nobody calls it that. So that story I wrote, it covered tons of material about just the very beginnings of motherhood before the baby's even out. And then early childhood and trying to think about what you want to do as a parent that emulates your own family and what you want to do that's completely different. I, I would say I had two lists. One was the things that um, I was raised with that I respect and like we're definitely doing that. You know, like I'm going to be reading every night and we're always going to sing songs and we're always going to dance around the house. And, you know, I had all these things that I loved from my parents. Um, their imagination and sense of fun and their love of, of storytelling and dancing and singing had a huge, it was a huge source of happiness in my childhood. And I'm getting all teary thinking about it because not everything was great, but that part was great. So yes, you know, I, I didn't even have to really make that much of a decision. It was easy. Um, in other respects, I was going to make a break. I was going to um, not raise my daughter with any religious tradition at all. I mean, of course, she was going to learn about religion, but in the same sense that we learn about Greek myths or, you know, myth, religion as mythology, as anthropology. And what would it be like to raise a child without a deeply interior sense of sin? and of burning in hell, which I definitely, you know, yeah. was raised with, with those notions. They had a tremendous effect on me. Um, I'm like Irish Catholic, ethnically and guiltily forever. There, I'll never escape. I found that part to be actually really easy. If you live in a community where it's cosmopolitan, lots of different kinds of people, lots of different kinds of political and religious beliefs, it's easy to have your own path. Um, some of the more difficult pieces, I would say, um, were things that aren't directly about sex, but I think they are profoundly involved in your adult sex life. And that was, I wanted to break the cycle of impulsive uh, violence and dis you know, physical discipline in the family. I, it's funny how I struggle to characterize what to say that because I remember as a kid reading stories about how one must discipline children it all sounded very methodical but in my family there wasn't anything planned about it you know mommy would get mad she'd just come in the door mad and you'd like run because if she caught you bam you know and there would be some you know stupid reason but it was really clear early on there didn't have to be any reason it was just impulsive taking it out on the kids, taking the dog, so to speak. And I, I think every child who's ever been slapped or hit or, you know, punished physically, you sit there and you say, you know, I'll never do this to anybody and I'm never going to, you know, there's so, you know, you think about the injustice of it all. And you grow up and if you're, if you see raising children ahead of you, you wonder, you know, your arrogance takes a step back, like, well, I have a temper. Am I going to lose it? And then what? I mean, how do, you, how do you honestly do something different? Because I had already been through the crap where the violent parent cries and wants you to comfort them after they've hit you. I hated that. That was worse than being hit, was the having to comfort them and baby them and get them back on their feet. I never wanted to be around for that part. I, um, 
I didn't want my daughter to be parentified that way. Um, and I, the reason why I think this affects your sex life, it reminds me about conversations people have about incest. I mean, the typical taboo about incest is that, oh, uh, well, we don't do it because you don't want to have, uh, you know, freakish offspring, you know. And besides, isn't it just icky? You know, but you kind of like scrape away, well, what's so icky beyond just your visceral reaction? And I think what lies beneath that has to do with if you establish physical dominion over your children, you are like crippling them in terms of being them being able to successfully separate from you and have an independent life. And that's the whole point. Like the metaphor of how they begin to walk, ultimately they need to walk away from you on their own and have their own lives. They need to be able to argue with you, walk away from you, speak on their own, have their own opinions. If you do that, man, you've, you've accomplished something. Well, incest really puts a kink in that. It's really hard to, to break it off and to rebel when your parent has had that kind of physical relationship with you. And I think physical violence has the same similar because your hands, your body, bigger than them, you know, taking that effect is, um, it's really difficult. It's really difficult. You grow up afraid, uh, afraid, unsure that you can take those steps. And that's why I, I don't think I'm some, some sort of saint. I mean, I'm still the same girl with a bad temper that, that my mother had. I think our, our family uh, is just terribly bad tempered people. But I had to make a plan for what I would do to catch myself before I got to that point. Yeah. And you talk about that in the book a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, I talk about, a, about it a lot because um, I think I, I'm, I'm even going to do a whole book on this subject where I'm going to say, fuck the birds and the bees talk. I don't care if you never have a sit down where you talk about the egg and the sperm and blah, blah, blah. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> Teach them how to read and be literate and imaginative and have a good science education and they're going to find all that out easily enough. What's more important is privacy, is keeping religion out of it, and keeping your brutal, ill-tempered hands off of them. You know, when you touch them, it should be with affection and, and love and kindness. And that, you know, that's always my goal that I look up to. And so when you ask me how there's so many things, you know, directions you could go in, some people say, how has motherhood affected you as a way of asking me, what is my um, sex frequency? <laughs> I'm wondering, like, did your love life go to hell? Totally different question. Well, then. it is really all about, are you getting any? I, am I getting any? Okay, yeah. This is the, that's the polite way of And asking. that's the next question. <laughs> that's question two. And hi. Welcome. Um, and that is one of these things where if I was a researcher, I would find it very tricky to take different things apart. Does parenthood put a cramp on spontaneity because you are making a sacrifice for someone else? You know, the, the baby's crying. You can't just say, I'm masturbating, shut the door. <laughs> Actually, you can, you know, you could, but you know, you can only be so cruel and indifferent, right? So you are making a sacrifice and not only is it a sacrifice, but it's this kind of like, I love making this sacrifice. I am, um, uh, you feel all Christ-like, sorry to be Catholic again, but you, know, you feel like this actually feels good to love someone so much that my own needs actually don't seem so important right now. So you'll have that aspect, but of course, one, if you're smart, you'll have lots of babysitters and, and, and trades with other parents and you know, you, you create some time to have fun and privacy for yourself. Um, and then, you add that to the fact that you are getting older. And being older could mean that you feel physically more inhibited or not as like, I'm going to a party at three o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to, I'm, I'm starting to, I'm go. I remember when we used to say, yeah, 
they're all fucking at the Esalen pools in Big Sur, and it opens up at 2 a.m. It's free. You know? <laughs> it's all these six people get in the car with a bong and go there, you know? And I thought that was really fun when I was 19. And now I would be like, no, you know, because I would consider that an uncomfortable adventure. And now I'm such a, a creature of comfort that um, that doesn't seem like a thrilling idea, but it did when I was mm -hmm. younger. And it doesn't have anything to do with motherhood. It just had to do with age, 